Today we'll be painting this scene of alien ships re-energising from the Pyramid Power Source. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, log on to our website at www.montmart.net because there are lots more lessons there, as well as our Facebook and our art club, The Creative Connection. So, let's get into it. This project is in oils as they are so easy to blend and the undercoat will be in acrylic. Acrylic provides a really hard flexible base. All of the colour recipes for this project are in the PDF. So I spray on a thin coat of water and lay the colour on with a wide tacklon. As I move down the canvas I add more water. To lighten the coat, the canvas is upside down at this stage because it's easier to work down. Next. I take the first image in the PDF, the compositional one. I lay it out, flip the canvas over and using a white pastel pencil I lay in the skyline and mark out the foreground position. We can now lay in the blue of the atmosphere. Again I use the large artist tacklon and get the colour on as quickly as I can. Give it a spray with water if it starts to dry. This is the important part, add more water to make the paint more translucent as you get closer to the bottom. I want to see that underlying colour through the top coat. Flip the canvas and add more white and water to the mix and cut in around the skyline. Blend the colours so the transition is smooth. Next add some sienna into the two corners of the foreground. This being darker will reinforce the perspective. Add some ochre and roughly blend it in. To create the giant looming planet I use a cord compass. In this case a leather shoelace, looped at one end to hold the pastel pencil. Refer to the compositional image to get it roughly the right size. I can then add the ring. Once this is rough then it's just a case of refining the shape till it looks right. This took me about an hour. Well our alien landscape is in and we can now add the elements. So take those printouts from the PDF and if you'd like to download that the link is right above me. I printed mine out to A3 for the pyramids and the front view and A4 for the creature and the side view. But if your project is smaller you could print them out at A4 and A5 respectively. So let's start by cutting out the pyramids. Scissors could be used to do this too. And that would be a better option if you are not yet an adult, as hobby knives are extremely sharp. And if you are an adult, then obviously exercise extreme caution. There is a little detail outside the perimeter of the spacecraft. Just cut to the profile lines, as we can put in those lost details in the detailing stage of the project. So print out a second set of images to refer to. When all of the elements are cut out, lay the canvas flat and position them. Once we are satisfied, we can apply them. To do this, I'm using Montmartre Acrylic Gloss Medium. Now this medium can glue things down, but it's also a sealer and a finish. It's non-toxic and has a pH level of nine. So it is acid free. Because the medium dries quickly, you have to be fast to ensure a good bond. Use a clean, soft brush. I'm using a Montmartre 25 millimeter Taclon and it's a perfect brush as it's soft and minimises any brush strokes. Don't lay it on too thick either or you run the risk of the paper wrinkling. Cover the front of the cutout as well. Let this dry and then give it a thin second coat. I then add a couple of planets using a paint lid and a glasses templates. Again refer to the compositional PDF for reference. Okay then, now for the oil top coat. This is phthalo blue and again refer to the PDF for guidance on mixing and technique. But suffice to say, enough medium should be mixed with the paint so the underlying colour can be seen to an extent. This is essentially a glaze. As I move down the canvas, I increase the amount of medium to paint so the colour gets lighter as we get closer to the skyline. I use the 25mm Taclon to do this. I keep the brush constantly moving to get the transition smooth, but also at the same time keep enough texture and variation in the coat. By the time I get to the skyline there is only a hint of phthalo in the mix. This is important because we want to create the dark side of the planet blending into the background. This is referred to as a lost edge. So half fill the planet, 
and blend it up to the arc and soften the edge. Then blend the back side of the planet into the background. The large planet can be handled the same way. If this is done smoothly, it will suggest great volume. The right side of the planet is in highlight, so it receives all the light. I lay this in with some Chinese white. Chinese white differs from titanium white as it's warmer and has a translucence about it. As I move into the centre of the planet, I fade the colour out into the undercoat. This is done by keeping a dry brush. I then blend the tones together with the large flat Taclon. Ensure the brush is totally clean and dry and use a light touch so the blend is subtle. I add a touch of crimson and blend it in. Subtle colour transitions are the key here. It is better to build the tone up slowly rather than lay in lots of dark tone as it's hard to remove if you have to. After I've coloured the ring, I add a highlight in at the point where it crosses the planet. I then lay titanium white into the area that would receive most light. This reinforces the spherical nature of the planet. At this stage I stand back and have a look at what has been done and evaluate if any areas need defining, softening or interest added. I thought it all looked a bit blue, so I decided to splash on a bit of red into the small planet. The same rendering steps were taken. It's amazing what a small burst of colour can do for a composition. Well, the background's done and we can start uh, glazing those elements. For the spacecraft, I add pure silver. Now, silver paint is mica-based, so no medium is required for it to be translucent. Use a small flat brush to do this. I've added a little colour in the bottom portholes of the ship. Follow suit for the side view. I want the pyramids to have a golden glow about them. And paint pure ochre into the light side. Add enough medium so that the coat is very translucent, so that the detail can still be seen. The darker side is handled the same, but a little sienna is added to the ochre mix. Ensure the coat is motley and not too flat. Any areas that would be in highlight can be removed with a clean brush. Now for my favourite part of the painting, the little alien anthropod-like thingy. Obviously, I used the scorpion as reference when I initially drew this up. I like his googly tentacle eyes. I use turquoise as the body colour. Again, I add enough medium so the underlying drawing can be seen and remove colour with a damp, clean brush. To the sand dunes, I add a subtle glaze to suggest depth. To add a little more interest, I add some simple round red flowers. Again, this burst of colour gives the viewer something to focus on and reinforces perspective through a busy foreground. I don't make them all the same size as it might look too balanced. Create some more on the other side of the canvas in the foreground area. I add the stems at this point and ensure they get slightly thicker as they move closer to the ground. To create that nice straight laser beam, I apply some tape for the purpose of masking and lay in some titanium white. It is important to use the paint directly from the tube, as any paint mixed with medium can seep under the tape, and that's annoying to repair. I then lay some phthalo into the centre of the beam so it fades out to the bottom. I then use a very dry brush to scrub a thin coat of tone in a dome shape to suggest a glow. Using the finest brush, I relay in that detail that I had to cut off in profile cutting the craft out. I use black for this and apply medium so it is the viscosity of cream. I take particular care with the antennas on the bottom of the craft. It is better to charge your brush with a little paint and if you do make a mistake, quickly remove it with a cotton wool bud. I want to suggest the contrail behind the craft and it needs to be straight. The best way to do this is to lay a ruler at an angle and run the furrow of the brush along it. Release the pressure slowly as you move away from the craft and voila. Next, create a cast shadow from Sienna and lay it in under the alien scorpion thingy. Cast shadows, ground the subject and tie it into the composition. The final step is to take a stiff bristle brush and fleck titanium white onto the background 
to suggest stars. And there you have it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And even if you don't try this project, there might be a technique in it that you could use with your art. Thanks for watching and remember to keep on painting. See you next time.